Laser 128. Hmm. Look at this dusty, dirty old relic that I found buried way down deep in the bottom of the garage. In a way, I'm kind of ashamed of myself letting something like this get so dirty. This was, I want to say, probably the second computer I owned. The first computer I ever owned was a Apple II Plus. And then... Uh, at the time that was already getting kind of out of date and I've been kept bugging people I wanted an Apple IIe in the worst way and I just couldn't get an Apple IIe well uh, the com I want to say the computer teacher one of the tech computer teachers or whatever at my high school uh, sold this to me it's it's a it's a believe it or not it's an Apple IIc clone. Uh, it'll run Apple software. In some ways it's better than the Apple IIc. And I used this for quite a long time until I finally did get an Apple IIgs. But uh, yeah, I was, I was an Apple man all the way up until the late 90s. And then I finally got my first IBM and I haven't touched Apple since. But anyway, uh, what inspired me to do this video? I've been watching the 8 bit guy. He's always restoring old computers like this, cleaning them up. And uh, I just wanted to see if I could get it cleaned up. And then I just, I just want to see if, it's, if the darn thing still works. So, yeah, I'll, uh, first thing I'll do, I'll probably take it apart and uh, clean it up and wash it up. And basically, I, I follow his procedures. I start with glass cleaner and then if anything real stubborn baking soda and then uh, anything really stubborn and you switch to the rubbing alcohol so yeah it's uh, I mean other than being really dusty I mean it's it's not all banged up or anything I mean this dust I think this will clean off real easy it's just a little dust so I'm probably have to clean the disk drive a little bit uh, I got lucky and I got two disk drives with it and for a second there, I didn't think I was going to be able to find the power supply. And you got to have the original power supply with it because it takes a, a weird proprietary power input. So I got lucky there. Um, I was just going to hook it to composite video. And then I see it looks like it's got the exact same video output as... Uh, as the 2GS has, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking I can hook this color monitor to it because it's the same, same pinout, same plug as that monitor. So I think I might be able to get away with using that monitor for a little better picture quality. So I'm definitely going to try that out. And then I started digging into the closet some more. I've been doing some cleaning and stuff today, and I saved all my old. I can't believe I still have this stuff. I was kind of flipping through it earlier, and uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty neat. You know, Apple DOS, Pro DOS, uh, kinds of interesting stuff on there. <laughs> look at that! <laughs> yeah, that'd be interesting to look at that and that. <laughs> yeah, I used to do my. I probably come across some old schoolwork on there. So, yeah, Apple Works, DOS, ProDOS, <laughs> Print Shop. I mean, who knows if these things still work, but there should be some games in here, too. Oh, here we go, Family Feud, Chase on Tom Sawyer's Island. Not sure what that one is. Hmm. There it says games. I don't know what games, but it says games. Hmm. I think this is more for the, the 2E. Yeah, 2GS games, music studio. These are three and a half inch floppies. But these, these five and a quarter, uh, these should work on that laser. Apple works. 
Who else used Apple Works to type up stuff? Typed up a lot of stuff on old Apple Works. Print shop again. Winter game. Oh, that's 2GS stuff. Uh, oh, there's some more games. Is that what I think it is? Seems like that was a, do a two disc though. I wonder if that ain't Oregon Trail. I loved Oregon Trail. Hangman, Horse Race, Pinball, huh. Family Feud. There, oh, we definitely gotta play this one. I thought I had it. The original Oregon Trail. <laughs> yeah, I, that was a, I played that game a lot when I was a little kid. There's another classic. Ah, oh. number munchers. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see if any of this old stuff still works. But uh, yeah, first we got to do some uh, cleaning. So yeah, interesting. Got some discets to play with anyway. Alrighty. Now I'm gonna start taking this apart and get some rags and start cleaning things up a little bit here. So far, not too bad taking it apart. It's just Phillips screws on the bottom. Uh, you have to do quite a bit of jiggling and wiggling to get it to come off this back part here. That's a little tricky. But uh, when I opened it, um, I'm a little sadder than... There's a bit of corrosion going on here. She's starting to rust, so... If I'm going to save it, now is the time to save it. Hopefully when I get down to the motherboard it ain't too bad. This is just a tin shield, I guess. It ain't no big deal if this is a little rusty. But as long as the the motherboard don't look too bad, I'll keep digging. We'll see what we find. As I'm taking the screws off the bottom here, I was curious. I was like, I wonder what this little access door is on the bottom here. So I opened them screws up and... There, it's a ROM chip. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, a couple more screws yet to get the disk drive out. I got the keyboard off. So, little by little. Coming off here. Well, the good news is it looks like the motherboard's in really pretty decent shape yet. Uh, no blown caps or... Uh, the only... It, the, the terminals on the back are a little bit corroded. There's a little corrosion and dirt there, but but overall the board itself is pretty good. Um, I wonder if this board hasn't been modified or added to, because this board here does not look like an original thing. And then if you look underneath, there's a bunch of extra bodge wires and stuff going on, you know, just it's not something that you see from the factory. Like someone's added something to it. I don't know if it's more RAM or or what the deal is. But yeah, this is definitely something extra that's been added. Hmm. Interesting anyway. But yeah the most of the corrosion just seems to be the the shielding. So I don't have to get... Underneath it looks good though. It's just the top the top surface. Um, same with the floppy drive. Uh, the top is really bad, but underneath it's uh, real good yet. And then the floppy drive... The floppy drive itself seems to be pretty clean and decent yet. Uh, and then uh, here, I was shocked at this. The, the belt is still even good yet. Usually that melts and rots off, especially with tape decks and stuff. I was quite surprised to see the belt was good on there yet. So, as I take it apart, it's looking more and more promising. I say, I was a little nervous there when I seen all that rust and corrosion, but as I dig into it deeper, it looks like it's in pretty decent shape yet. I'll find out soon enough once I get things cleaned up a little bit and put back together, I'll give it a test run. But I want to clean things up halfway decent before I do that. So it continues. This is always the longest part. 
cleaning the stinking keyboard one key at a time <laughs> uh, shine them up get there eventually Whew, man that's a long and tedious process um, but the keyboard turned out really nice I think that shined up real good and I think the top the top came out pretty nice too so let's see if I can set this on here. Give you an idea how this is going to look when it's all done. Not too shabby. Shining up pretty good. Well, I would say considering how dirty it was, I think it shined up pretty darn good. So, uh, I also uh, cleaned the disk drive head with alcohol and a Q-tip. Um, anything metal, I uh, soak, I, uh, rub it down with deoxit, so hopefully that'll keep that from rusting or corroding any further. And then any rust that was on there, I kind of wiped it off. So it didn't turn out too bad, but hopefully that'll keep it from rusting any further. Um, this Apple 2GS monitor, that plug does plug into that, whether We'll get a video signal out of that, I don't know. I guess we'll just have to turn it on and find out here. Got my Oregon Trail ready to go. See what she does, see if she still works. Signal, no nothing. We do got lights here though. Cap lock works. Maybe you can't hook that kind of monitor to it. Alrighty, well, I will get a, a different monitor. Okay, I found a monitor with a composite output. Let's see if at least get a video signal out of it. Oh yeah. Okay. So check this. Press any key to reboot. All right. Well, let's see if we can get my disc to work now. Sorry if this is flickering. I don't know how to set the frame rate on that camera, so it doesn't do that. You know how it is with CRT monitors and camcorders. You just have to put up with the flickering. Let's see. Uh, Hmm, either that disk is bad or the disk drive is still dirty. I'll have to try a different disk. Hold on here. Eh, where's the pause button? See if my copy of ADT Pro at least works. That's that was the most recent disk I've made. Looks like it's trying. Hmm. That should have booted by now. Let's see, let's switch. To... Hmm. I don't think that. I think that disc is not spinning. Acts like it wants to spin. I'm going to have to do a, some adjusting on that drive. Maybe if I don't push it down all the way. Oh no, it's spinning. Sound like it's seeking though. Hmm. The computer's definitely working. 
the disk drive is just not working. Okie dokie. Well, it's going to require a little further investigation, I guess. Okay, I hooked this monitor back up to my original 2GS. I just want to make sure this, this is still working. Okay, the mon this monitor is still working with the GS. So... There's two things I found wrong with this thing. Number one, the RGB output doesn't seem to be working because I tried the GS monitor and I also tried I got a, a Macintosh, I tried that Macintosh monitor too and it, I saw I can't get no RGB video out of it and number two uh, there's, there's still something wrong with the disk drive so I think I'm gonna have to open it back up again and do some fiddling and fixing and see what I can figure out here uh, it ain't quite right yet aha uh -huh. I uh, success <laughs> believe it or not just for curious kicks and giggles I do have a whole bunch of other old Apple original Apple II products like this is a disk drive for the original Apple IIe and uh, Apple II GS and on the back it, it does you can hook it up as a second drive on the back of this but then it then it's still drive 2 well you can't really boot anything from drive 2 and then I thought well I remember taking these apart because you, you got to clean clean the heads quite often and adjust the drive speed and stuff and I thought you know that flat connector looks almost exactly the same where the cable plugs in I thought well I'll just plug that in into an original Apple drive and just see what happens and sure enough it works so it's definitely the drive itself so I'll have to work on that and then uh, I didn't even uh, attempt the RGB video output yet I don't know what the deal is with that but according to what I read on the internet any Apple monitor should work the the Macintosh monitors the the 2GS monitors it, it's this thing is fully Apple compatible so it should work okay um, this drive seems to work what I did I took uh, the second drive apart out of its casing and I put that in the computer and that drive seems to work okay so for now I think I'll just put the second drive in the main computer and then until I can figure out what's wrong with that drive I'll, uh, I'll use this one so far it seems to work another thing I noticed I don't have any sound so that's something goofy going on there too so at least I got a working disk drive now in it okay yeah one thing at a time yeah the, that's the reason there was no sound uh, the speaker is shot so I just pulled another speaker from another old PC and soldered that in and it uh, seems to work okay I gotta get got a game in there we have sound if you can call it sound <laughs> Come on, that's all we had when I was a kid. What do you expect? 5.1 digital surround sound? <laughs> but that's what you get. But got that working anyway. Okay, I got everything put back together. Uh, everything works except the RGB video output and that is beyond my knowledge. I have no idea where to even begin to diagnose and fix that problem. But the composite video works great. So anyway, at least it's 90% fixed and good to go. Um, I really wanted to show you guys me playing uh, Oregon Trail on there, but uh, my Oregon Trail disc seemed to be corrupted. So I am going to give you a quick little brief video 
show you how I uh, make my own uh, five and a quarter inch discs. Uh, I use a program called ADT Pro. And uh, hold on a second, I'm gonna show you my setup here, how I do this. Okay, I'll do the best I can to describe this so I don't sound like an idiot. And I highly recommend uh, looking for other videos and tutorials on the internet. Uh, basically these Apple five and a quarter inch floppies are kind of written in their own proprietary Apple language. Uh, so if you want to write one of these floppies, you can't use an old IBM floppy disk drive. You have to use the original Apple drive to write your own disk. Well obviously you can't connect that floppy drive directly to a modern computer. So here's how we do this. You take a modern computer, a laptop, laptop, desktop. Uh, you can use Windows XP, Windows 7, um, Windows 10 I'm sure will work too. Um, and you want to download a program called ADT Pro. It's just a little program. And uh, it gives you plenty of options for connecting. Uh, I prefer serial. That seems to be the fastest. Um, and in theory, I could connect to, let's see which one is it here, one of these is a serial port. There it is, a serial printer. If I had a cable to plug into that end, the, I, think, I think they call it a 5-DIN pin, that went to, uh, let's see, I'm going to show you what this looks like here that went to this, I could plug that into a somewhat older computer with this, that still has the serial port, but uh, I don't have that cable so I'm going to use the old my old reliable 2GS. Uh, I opened it up to show you. I was lucky enough to have this card here. This card is kinda hard to come by. Uh, I originally had it in my 2E, but I put it in my 2GS uh, this is what they call a super serial card and uh, you put that in one of the slots and you hook the cable to it here and then that turns it into serial. Well this you could hook directly to a little bit modern computer with a serial port which I can show you quick. For example like my Pentium 3 this still has the old style serial port. Matter of fact it has two of them. Uh, even my Pentium 4 still has a serial port yet, but uh, most modern day computers kind of did away with that port along with the parallel. So you could connect it directly to that. That's another option. Or the next option is I have this here. This is a serial to USB converter. So you can go from serial to USB and plug into any modern computer with a USB port. Basically you want to connect these two computers together and it's doing and they're going to communicate with each other through the serial serial to USB port. That's how they're going to communicate. Okay, slight change of plan here. I was going to use my laptop uh, but the problem is this serial to USB cable that I bought from Radio Shack many many years ago only has drivers good up to Windows XP. Well I don't have Windows XP on that laptop and the laptop does not have a serial port so I had to ditch the laptop idea because I could not find drivers for this. So I switched to the old reliable Pentium 4 which still has a serial port on the back of the motherboard and I got my ADT Pro running here and I'm gonna uh, later in this video I'm gonna show on the internet uh, where to go to get more detailed instructions on how to set this all up because there's a lot of monkeying around with this old stuff I mean you think about it I mean you're trying to make a, a 30 year old computer communicate with a a newer computer so it's it's a lot of monkeying around you messing messing with uh, speed settings and COM ports and it's it's a lot of fiddling around you really got to do a lot of fiddling to get it to work um, 
I've already done this in the past, and I, I, I made myself an ADT uh, floppy disk to save some time here, so I can at least get things going. But uh, there's instructions on that website on how to get this all set up. This is what tells the old computer how to communicate with the new computer. But, uh, yeah. But this is basically how you're going to... The only way you're going to be able to burn your own floppy disks to work on these old computers. So, yeah. Alrighty. Okay, uh, got the tripod so I don't have to hold the camera. Um, these floppy disks are getting a little harder and harder to find. Um, I just happen to have a whole box of old, like, history type. I don't know what you call them, but I'm thinking it's something that we don't have to worry about. So I'm going to reformat and reuse these disks. They're probably out of date anyway. <laughs> so I'm taking uh, format one of these. Yes, I am blocking the shot. Okay, hold on here. Let me get to the other side. There, that's better. Format. Slot 6, drive 1. Yep. And move it blank. Yes. Give ourselves a nice blank see, uh, floppy to run off of here. that should be ready to receive a file. Now what we want to do, we want this computer here to receive a file from the new computer. So we'll hit receive. And the game I want, let's see, I can't remember how to spell it. Game ROMs. Come on. I don't even know how to pronounce that game. I used to play the heck out of it when I was a kid. It's called Mon Montonzi? Matanzi? Matonzi's Revenge? M T E Z U M A. U M A. And you have to put the dot D S K. That's uh, the abbreviation for the for the image, and we should be able to, let's see, I'll make sure this is all set here, right, sorry for the delay, make sure this is connected, Oh, well, we're not connected, connect, there we go, no activity, all right, I should be able to, in theory, hit return, and it should start receiving, oh, and then you got to tell it to go to the floppy we just formatted, oh, there we go, Okay, it's receiving there, and over here is where it's transmitting. There we go. So it's transferring that floppy disk image to the Apple IIGS. And when we're all done, I should be able to take that floppy and put it in that laser computer and it should work. So, I'll uh... As soon as this gets done here, I'll jump on the other computer and I'll uh, give you some links to some websites and stuff, and so you can learn how to do this yourselves. It's it's quite you can get quite complicated in quite a hurry, but it's a pretty nice website if you read through it. There's some troubleshooting guides and uh, some YouTube videos and other people that have done this, hooking these old computers up. And there's more than one way to do it. I do it through the serial port. If you don't have that cable. Um, you can even do it through the audio port, which takes a lot, lot longer and it's less reliable. But if you don't have that cable, you know, sometimes them cables can be hard to find. That is another option. Okay, that's complete. In theory, let's see, control, apple, reset. I'm just going to check, make sure the disc works on this. 
before we try it on the old laser. Aha! Yeah, Mo Motenz Mo Matenzama's Revenge. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that, but just gonna see if it works here. Oh yeah, so far so good. Keyboard. Define keys. Left, right, up, down. Oops. In case I did that wrong. Left, right, up, down, and jump. Oh. That is way too fast. I forgot to slow this. <laughs> the Apple II GS has two speeds. I know it's, this is way too fast to play on here. But uh, it's working anyway, so now we can try it on the laser. Okay, yeah, not the best camera angle, but uh, and I I, sh <laughs> I can't find a better monitor, but this I'll have to do for now. Oh, look at that! It's working so far. Let's see, two. The game speed should be a little better on this one, I would think. It's closer to the 2E instead of the GS. Let's see, keyboard, find keys, left, right, up, down. Okay. Now it's the tab key's a little sticky. Oh, there we go. Much better. If I could get the RGB output to work on it, it would, the picture quality would be a little better, but at least the computer's working, though. So, yeah. So it's working. I guess if anybody wants to leave anything in the comments on how to uh, fix and diagnose this uh, video expansion port, this RGB video out, um, from what I've read on the internet, it's 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 a standard Apple RGB output, and that Apple II GS monitor should have worked. Why it didn't, I don't know. Um, like I say, I don't get no picture signal at all, and I even tried. Uh, I even tried my uh, Macintosh monitor, which has also got the same pinout right here, and I just I can't get a picture out of either. So there's got to be something wrong with that port. But other than that, uh, considering it's been sitting in that garage for God knows how long, dirt and dust, I think it cleaned up pretty nice. So it's working pretty good. Okay, if you don't want to do all that monkeying around with that old computer hardware, them old TUIs, and because you know them machines are 30 years or older, you know, <laughs> sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, especially the floppy disks. And if you just want to play the games, uh, you can do that now on your modern Windows 10 computer. The best emulator I found so far is a it's called Apple Win, and the latest version is 1.29. You download that, and uh, it's just it's like any other program. It's got a an execute. Open it up, and this little thing right here is your pretend Apple IIe. E. That's the, this Apple is your power button. These are your two pretend floppy drives here. And for the games, if you just go to apple2online.com, uh, they got just about every Apple game ever made. And as far as I know, it's it's free and legal because it's abandonware. It's so old and out of date that. So yeah, if you look in the games library, uh, let's see, let's look for Moon Patrol. Moon Patrol was a game I really like to play. It's all in alphabetical order. Uh, let's see, Moon Patrol should be here. It's a pretty common game back in the day. Oh, there's our Moon Tenzama's Revenge. <laughs> oh, and there's Moon Patrol. 
and uh, you download it as a zip file. Let's see if I want to save it to my desktop so it's easy to find. And it only takes a, like a second to download because it's such a small. And you have to extract it because it's zipped up. And once you extract it, why do we have two disks? That's weird. Well, the, di the disk you want for the Apple IIe should be the 140 kilobyte one. I'm thinking this upper one is maybe for the 2GS. I don't think... But yeah, here's the disk image right here. So then you open your emulator, open your pretend floppy, and you tell it. I got a whole bunch. I downloaded a whole bunch over the years. Uh, let's see. Here's Moon Patrol. Open that up. Now we got our pretend floppy in the disk drive, and we hit the power button on our pretend. It does the beep and everything. It's awesome. There we go. And you can go to full screen. And it works just like the old... I, I can't believe how well it works. Usually emulators don't work too well, but this, this works awesome. Ooh. That was a little loud. But yeah, it works beautifully. See if I remember how to play this here. Oh yeah. Whoops. A little slow on the draw there. <laughs> it's been a few years. Give me a break. I forgot which button was jump. A is jump. But yeah, you can relive your childhood. At least if you're as old as I am. But yeah, this is what I played when I was in elementary school. I played these, Oregon Trail, Number Munchers. Uh, the only glitch I find on at least my computer, I can't get out of full screen. I have to hit the Windows key to manually close it. Why that's doing that, I don't know. But uh, let's see. How do I get that back? Okay. But another one I really played a lot in school. Let's see if any of you guys remember this one. This one you could get away with playing without the teachers having a conniption fit, because at least, at least it was an educational game. <laughs> Let's see... No. Must remember playing this in elementary school, huh? But yeah, you can uh, easily emulate it on. You don't have to mess with any of that old computer stuff. I think I played this enough in school. Why is this only set on three? That's weird. Numbers should go up when it. Why it's not? I don't know why. It must be a glitch or something in the settings. But yeah, relive your old childhood anyway. So let's see. Exit. But uh, yeah, there's um, YouTube videos about this stuff. Let's see. Oh, I was going to show you ADT Pro. Let's see. Uh, I forgot about that website. ADTPRO. But yeah, to get that all set up, this gives you step by step instructions how to download it, um, what you need for cables, disks. Um, there's a YouTube video on how to set it up. Hello. This video will demostrate bootstrapping the Apple II computer. And he goes through it step by step. Plain English, it's pretty simple. So yeah, if you just go to addpro.com, so it's pretty good. Either way, this procedure, along with the open source ADD Pro software, can bring your old machine back to life. For this exercise, huh? we'll be using a Laser 128 Apple II. That's what we just used. It works just the same way, though, for any other Apple II. <laughs> Be it an original Apple II with a Super Serial card, an Apple IIe with a Super Serial card, an Apple IIc or Apple IIc Plus, or an Apple IIgs, yep, got that one. or a Franklin, 
or Atomic Sinclair 1000. Never well, heard of those. <laughs> maybe not one of those, but any other Apple II with a serial connection will do. So here we are back at our Laser 128. We'll spin it around and get it connected. But anyway, you, you get the idea. Null modem and a USB serial yeah, adapter. Yeah, that's the cable I don't Cables have. Cables <laughs> are available from RetroFloppy.com if you don't want to wire one up yourself. So, Plug the DIN 5 into the modem. Anyway, there you go. I think this video is long enough, so I'm going to call it. Thanks for watching.